So hello and welcome back to another geological video and in today's video we're looking at the red bluff sand so this is a sandstone and as you can see it's a gray but in some places it is a white layer and on top of it we have a clay layer so this is a reddish clay layer uh, with a lot of basalt boulders in the actual matrix so this is probably just weathered basalt probably could have been weathered in place so it's extremely weathered obviously not a lot of organics because there's a red so it does have some organics but the highly organic clay is actually black so this has a lot more organics than the actual red clay but i surmise that this red basalt clay and this black one's pretty much the same type of clay uh, it's just this is at the later stage of weathering and this is an earlier stage so then underneath we have this red bluff sandstone and as you can see i can break it up with my hand so this is a three and a half million year old deposit and you get to, it comes in various colors so this clay has a lot of iron that's why it's red iron oxides the gray layer in some places it is a brownish red color has a lot of iron oxides but in this case it has been weathered out and it's turned into a gray layer so you can see it's not very consolidated you can see some stratifications in the actual layer that could have been because of uh, the way they've excavated the actual deposit so if we move around you can see that this is an unconformity so it looks like it's been weathered a bit because it's not that horizontal so it's an unconformity in which the basalt has been placed on top so this could be either a fill or a lava field and if we go down you can see that the layer becomes a lot more wider less grey so that grey has probably been affected by the mineralogy of the actual um, basalt on top that's uh so the, as the water percolates down uh, it's taken minerals and it's changing the color of the actual sandstone so if we look here we can see we have a white sandstone and this oh, was deposited in a delta environment although this is quite a massive formation so we don't see any type of uh, laminations so it's just massive you can't see any structure in a lot of the deposits although you might be able to see it here so it looks like there's one a oh, little bit so it's a little bit harder but this could be just rain deposit but maybe that is a a type of lamination that we see in the deposits it's just a bit hard to tell so if we go up once again we can see that it turns into a gray so this is a lot harder material than the actual white deposit so this has some sedimentation oh, no, it's not sedimentation <sighs> this has some type of cementation so cemented and as you can see we have a basalt outcrop uh, this is highly weathered so if you do try and touch it the basalt does break apart but obviously this deposit is about three and a half million years old this is a lot younger so the volcanics here started about five million years ago so this is probably uh, could be three and a half could be two million years ago i don't know i haven't dated the deposit but as you can see it's quite thick so here's weathered so this has probably been weathered before uh, that deposit was placed on top of it looks like and then we have the soil horizon up above so does this have any fossils oh this this material has just fallen down uh well i can't see any but the rib sand is 
not likely to have no mini fossils that's what it's been described as so underneath this we have another deposit so I have uh, okay so I have you know information so we've got all these deposits that started 50 million years ago so between 50 and about 300 and uh, 80 million years ago we didn't really have any sedimentation in uh, Port Phillip so we've got 30 million years ago it was pretty much a bay so that included a larger area than the current Port Phillip we'll see on the maps when I do the second half of this video okay so 12 million years ago we had the sea uh, okay so the video ran out of room had to delete some stuff and I'm not too sure where I was at in the last video so we're just gonna start off so we have the gray uh, this is somewhat cemented and it's a little bit harder than the actual white sand which has got no cementation in it at all so it's just a uh, highly compact sand so here we have some cementation we need to do use some effort to actually break up the actual uh, sand itself although it is relatively easy now on top of it we have an unconformity and we have the basalt so there was a period of time of weathering of this sand because uh, I don't see any pillow basalt so this at the time when this basalt was laid is at a uh, it was just laying pretty much so and we do have vesicles here so obviously this cooled pretty quickly and it looks like we might have some baking of the sand in between although it's a bit hard to say there would have been some baking uh, probably like this period here uh, because this would have been uh, at least a thousand degrees as a lava flow and as you can see for a period of time there was weathering of this rock it looks like then there was a, another deposited on top and we have the soil so this is the red bluff sand underneath we have the black rock sandstone which is uh, a quartz sand calcareous and it's the sedimentation is uh, iron oxides okay that one has a lot of fossils uh, but this red bluff doesn't seem to have any so this could be a beach environment but the descriptions I have uh, it's 24 meters it's uh, sand gravel with clay lenses uh, with uh, some beds of carbonaceous silty sand poorly stratified some current beds and the fossils that you can find in it are some plant fossils so it's definitely estuarine and sponges so it's still a marine environment so this would have been close to the actual shore the beach environment that has uh, a lot of stones so if we move along we can see uh, this, yeah this is a lot lighter so the actual coloration that we get the grays that could have been uh, an artifact of the actual basalt so as the basalts are weathering it's leaching elements I'm not too sure what type of element but as you can see a lot of the iron oxide in the basalts left in place and uh, the grey could have been affected by the actual leaching downward of uh, minerals so as you can see it's just a, quite a massive and here we have indication of iron oxide cementation so it's still quite soft but if you leave this exposed to the environment uh, it a lot of times it does harden uh, with the re reaction to oxygen uh, to make a lot harder material so it looks like we have uh, a lens here of iron oxide this could have been a period of non-deposition probably a little bit of weathering but so we do have some coarser materials that we, we have looks like uh, could be feldspar or quartz I'd say probably quartz itself milky quartz and 
that is a bit different than the material that's up here which is a lot finer so obviously in different periods you have different uh, sizes of material so here we have some class some gravel and if we go to the full 23 meters we'll probably find some differentiation so another thing that we have here is we have okay so here we have a, a clay deposit and here we have the silt and sand mainly sand uh, and in it we do have some basalt cobbles so obviously uh, some of them has fallen down but this one looks embedded so what we have here is we have another angular unconformity uh, probably this clay if we have a look over has a lot of basalt in it it's rounded so this has been probably transported by water this could have been a, a river deposit so before the actual uh, it's inundation of by the ocean so I'm just guessing this could have been a river deposit and it this could have actually been the actual river itself so the cut in the actual water uh, so the bank so the bank of the actual river sorry I'm a little bit nah, they're all over the place here yeah? and so this will be older than three and a half million years and then we had this deposit of three million years ago and you can see up the top we have the same thing so we have a cut pretty much going that way so we have deposits here and we have massive basalt so I'm a bit confused on what's going on here so if you go stratification uh, this will be older that will be next and the basalt will be last but this could be an actual fault fault line uh, that's actually either transported the material down or even up uh, that I'm not too sure about anyway I hope this helps you with your jolly so this is the ripped off sandstone it's actually quite a lot of it all over the place and in this area sunshine uh, it does make part of the basement rock anyway thank you and enjoy okay so here we have a trench that they've excavated and what we're looking at before is up there so this goes at least six to seven meters down and that's all pretty much just sandstone down below we do have some sandstone with uh, iron oxides so that should be well cemented and a lot harder so it's a bit hard to get down there uh, but what we have here we have the cutoff point pretty much where that drainage uh, pipe is so that's the actual cutoff point and on this side we have a lot of uh, silt and also basalt rocks you can see the basalt it's actually in the clay so it looks like silt it's probably it's just clay silty clay something like that and that goes all the way that way so this is probably a fault line that's what I'm getting at because where the sandstone's probably been pushed up over the actual um, clay so this clay could actually be younger than the actual sandstone uh, but on the geological maps I don't see any indications of a fault line obviously a lot of these faults have not been mapped so that is very interesting and once again it's all massive uh, I do see some laminations in it but obviously these lines uh, body excavator bucket uh, does damage any information you can get from it so that is uh, very interesting so for the third part of this series we have 
the Centering Ham Environment Series number eight. So you can download this off the internet. Uh, just put in this file name and uh, it will come up. So this is a PDF that was prepared by Eric Bird in 1990. It's actually very good if you want to learn about the local geology. It mostly deals with the Belmorris fossil site area. So that's where most of the information is directed. Uh, but it does cover a lot of the Port Phillip Bay uh, development. So the first thing that you can see, we have, have a geological time scale. So a lot of these dates probably have changed a little bit. So I think the end of the Cretaceous is down to 64 million years, something like that, instead of 65. It used to be 66. And I think at one time it was at 70 million years. So they do change. Uh, the Cambrian, I think it's 565 million years now. Uh, and I believe the end of it's about 520. So those times have changed a bit. Uh, but I need to look that up because I, I don't... Uh, they keep changing. I just don't bother trying to remember them. Okay, so then we have the geological formation. So we've got Holocene. So this, that's a current period. So that's any deposits that you see, you know, like beaches, sand dunes, uh, river deposits that is, are being uh, formed now. Uh, we've got sand dunes from the Pliocene. The Pliocene red buff sand, so that's the sand formation that we saw today. And underneath we have the black rock sandstone. Then underneath that, another Miocene formation, Bionsford formation. So you can see um, between the red bluff and the black rock, it's supposed to be an unconformity. So that means there's been some erosion before the black rock has been deposited. But between the fines, food doesn't look like it's continuous, so changing conditions. And also you've got the Silurian, so the date between the Silurian and the Miocene is about... Oh, about 340 million years. So it's definitely an unconformity. But these are interpretations. And uh, other interpretations are the black rock and the red bluff. Uh, part of the same formation called the Balmoris Group. Okay, so here we have the Port Phillip region. So this is the current geological map. So you can see the Yu Yangs, which is a granite outcrop. Uh, we have some more. Granites over to the east, uh, Frankston, so they've got granites everywhere. The stripe lines are the newer volcanics, and it gives you into so we've got older basalts as well. So, especially in the Ballerine Peninsula, you can see the newer uh, volcanics are pretty far away from the older volcanics. Surrounding it, we have Cretaceous sandstone. Quaternary deposits, so it's probably dune deposits and uh, alluvial. It's all pretty flat around there. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. So where we were today is underneath the actual basalt, so the new volcanics. And uh, that's an interesting map. Look at it if you have time. Okay, then we go down. We have introduction, so... If you want to pause the video, just read it, then you might as well. So, yeah, we have a lot of information here, not really going to dwell on it. Okay, then we have an, a map. So, here we have the Red Bluff Sand, and as you can see, this is the Balmoris Monocline, so uh, it has uh, down walked or been lifted up on one side and the black rock sandstone as you can see both of them been eroded quite a lot uh, so the black rock sandstone has a lot of uh, fossil fauna red bluff doesn't really have that many fossils so then we have a cross section so we've got St Kilda 
and this is just a cross section it's got rip and lee to black rock so that's going inland and as you can see these formations uh, they peter out landward so that means the Silurian is the basement rock uh, but because these were deposited in ocean estuarine, estuarine environments uh, the St Kilda Ridge would have been the coastline in the past Oligocene sediments and basalts hmm. so then we have some more information about the actual uh, geology We've got Mesozoic and Paleozoic eras so okay about 100 million years ago Australia became for the first time a distinct continent from Antarctica and New Zealand had diverged creating an intervening ocean, South Ocean and Tasman Sea so we have the tertiary period so if you're looking at these two formations this is where it, it starts so obviously you've got a 50 million year interval so take the present outline so we have Eocene, Oligocene uh, sediments around Frankston, Mount Marfa okay Port Phillip Bay became a marine basement in Oligocene time so that's at least 35 million years ago so about 20 million years ago uh, Port Phillip and Western Port so that's around uh, Phillip Island they existed in the north side of the large embayment underlying best trade so you can read the rest of the information if you are so inclined to so then we have the black rock outcrop so this is about 12 million years in age and as you can see uh, it's mainly sand deposits black rock blah blah uh, at the base is more resistant than the red brown orange yellow and gray sandstones higher levels so the dark brown has a lot of iron oxide and that's down below so a lot of the top one either has uh, not been infused with as much iron oxide or has been leached and it's gone down lower into the formation okay at red bluff and black rock and you have three meters of black rock sandstone is visible but the formation is just 15 meters thick at Balmoris okay and it gives you some more information so you can read that while pausing the video and here is uh, probably a more important thing we can see the depositional area of uh, Port Phillip Sunklands so this is where a lot of the black rock and red bluff sands were deposited so, and the fault lines are areas of uplift that generated a lot of material where um, of course the materials the sand and gravels uh, came down from those uh, higher elevations so that's very interesting so you got Salon Fault in the southeast north west we have the rosley fault so it's a major one you can actually see and drive up it it's very noticeable the melbourne wall in the northeast you probably barely notice same as the belmarsh monocline then a barrable fault so you can probably sort of see it uh, i think on monday i'll be going over that so we might actually have a look okay so okay here's the land in the Miocene times so this is uh, before the red bluff was actually deposited and as you can see a lot of it were a lot of victoria was actually uh underwater especially up near mildura and otway basin so 
where the ways are now, the higher in the elevation, so it's been uplifted quite a lot. And it gives the same basin. And then we had some photos. You know, you can go online and check out photos of these places. And here's the Port Phillip region in the early Pleistocene. So this is a time period when the Red Bluff was actually being deposited. So it says deposition of Red Bluff sands and Black Rock sandstone over the sands and clays of the Flansford Formation. And as you can see, the Arish Point Nin would have been the major river courses. Uh, they probably correspond to current rivers, but I haven't looked that up. So you've got Ballerine Island, Ballerine Peninsula, and where we were was pretty much probably up where this area is uh, being deposited, where it be river region. So, and then you got some more information, and then we have another cross section. So this is at the coastal area, not really where I am. And as you can see, the Red Bluff does have sandy clays. Um, we've got soils on top. Uh, plus there's any sand dunes here. Uh, they might occur there, but I haven't seen any. Uh, and the Black Rock sand is a lot lower, but pretty uh, eroded at that location. Then we've got information on Red Bluff Sand. So it's a regression of sea continued in Pleistocene. Blah, 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 blah. Cumulus. So it's a shallow water environment. as terrestrial deposits on the slowly subsiding Deltic Plain to form the Red Bluff Sand, which overlies Black Rock. So in the north, on the northern part of the fault, we have uplift. And in the Deltic Plain, there is a uh, subsistence. So it's actually going down. So that's a, one of the major reasons why now Port Phillip the way it is. Because uh, it's subsided a bit. And Spolex below, blah, blah, blah. Black, black rock sand formation consists of 24 metres of clay sand and gravels. With clay lenses and a bed of carbonaceous silty sand up to 30 centimeters thick near the base. So, if you get to the silty sand, that's what they've described as the base of the formation. So, to cut it off from the black rock. So, anyway, this is a very interesting PDF for you to read. And I recommend uh, you, you search for it if you're so inclined to read this type of material. And the photos are black and white, so uh, you can't really get a full picture. But if you go to Google, you can actually see a lot of photos of the area as well. So here we have a black rock sandstone, the base of the red bluff. Makes four several anticlines. And here we go, we've got the two uh, bluffs sticking out, and they're the anticlines, and the beach area is the syncline, which is a lot easier to be eroded. And here we have the old water course of Port Phillip, and as you can see, it goes out to the rip area, so out to the uh, Bass Strait. So that's the former river. So that would have been 140 metres below present sea level. So either that was well, higher in elevation if it sunk, or there was a, a period of uh, yeah, 18,000 years. Yeah. Would have been an ice age. Then we have some more information. Uh, that's a former quarry. And the human era, which has changed the area for quite a long time.